This photo is the most historic photo in physics, where 29 scientists gathered and debated in a forum called the Fifth Solvay Conference. They were not ordinary people. They were Nobel Prize winning physicists, including Einstein. What were they debating? They debated quantum theory, which had just emerged at the time, a theory that completely changed physicists' perspective on physics itself. A theory that claimed physics at the atomic level was no longer an exact science, but had transformed into a science of uncertainty. Even Einstein opposed quantum theory, famously stating, God does not play dice. From the special theory of relativity, Embrace the quantum world it revealed. God doesn't play dice. Oh, precisely. Beyond the debate about quantum theory, there is something interesting about this photo. Three people in the photo appear in the movie Oppenheimer. Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, and Werner Heisenberg. Why were these three featured in Oppenheimer? Because they were Oppenheimer's mentors. For those who don't know, Oppenheimer is a historical film that tells the story of the creation of the atomic bomb that devastated Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The main character highlighted in the film is Oppenheimer, an American physicist who led the Manhattan Project, the project to build the atomic bomb. However, Oppenheimer would not have been able to create the atomic bomb without learning from these three, as they were the founders of quantum theory and the ones who understood why the atomic bomb could be made. But we've all heard about Einstein and Zillard's letter to Roosevelt warning him the Germans could make a bomb. I know what it means for the Nazis to have a bomb. So watch this video until the end as we discuss the story of Oppenheimer and his three mentors. It's guaranteed to be exciting because this isn't just the history of the atomic bomb. It's the history of physics involvement in war. A story about brilliant minds dealing with war, leading to devastating consequences. They can create weapons that had never existed before. We have to make the politicians understand this isn't a new weapon. It's a new world. And if the truth is catastrophic, then you stop and you share your findings with the Nazis. So, prepare your mind and faith, because we're about to delve into a topic that could drive you crazy. Oppenheimer opens with an intriguing quote, Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans. As a result, he was chained to a rock and tortured forever. Who was Prometheus? Prometheus was the god of fire in Greek mythology, famous for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to humans. Fire symbolizes knowledge, and with fire, humans built civilization. But because of his actions, he was punished by Zeus, chained, and tortured. Why was this quote included? Because Oppenheimer's story mirrors Prometheus's. He became famous for creating the atomic bomb, earning the title Father of the Atomic Bomb. Ironically, after creating the atomic bomb and leading America to victory in the war, following the bombings of Japan, Oppenheimer was treated unfairly. He was accused of being a Russian spy and a communist. Based on information gathered from a spy at Los Alamos. No spy at Los Alamos. Gentlemen, there wasn't. let's not get sidetracked. Consequently, he was put on trial and his security clearance was revoked. His fate was similar to Prometheus, who, after giving something valuable to humanity, ended up being punished. But let's go back in time so you can understand who Oppenheimer was and how he came to create the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer was an American, born in America. From a young age, he was known as a genius. He graduated from Harvard in just three years, earning cum laude, he was known as a multi-talented individual, mastering various fields, science, philosophy, and even many languages. As depicted in the film Oppenheimer, when he visited the Netherlands, he learned Dutch in just six weeks. Hey, the bulls sing to us in an alpha Dutch and at home. 
You learned enough Dutch in six weeks to get a lecture on quantum mechanics. I had to challenge myself. His linguistic skills also enabled him to read Hindu scriptures in their original language, making him famous for a quote from the Bhagavad Gita. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. But behind his brilliance, Oppenheimer was a complicated individual prone to stress and emotional outbursts. He was suspected of having schizophrenia. During his time at Cambridge, he even once attempted to poison his professor with cyanide because he couldn't stand the professor's bullying, which belittled his practical skills. Ultimately, he stopped himself from doing it. This incident led him to leave Cambridge and move to Germany to study quantum physics in depth. It was quantum physics that gave Oppenheimer his path. He earned his PhD at the age of 23, returned to America, and became the first person to teach quantum physics in the United States. Now let's discuss how Oppenheimer was connected to the three founders of quantum theory, and how that connection led him to become the father of the atomic bomb. First, you need to know who these three individuals are. Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, and Werner Heisenberg. The first is Albert Einstein. Everyone knows Einstein as a genius for discovering the theory of relativity and formulating the equation E equals mc squared. But the important point here is that Einstein initiated the birth of quantum theory after his discovery of the photoelectric effect, which concluded that light behaves not only as a wave, but also as a particle. This dual nature of light is one of the paradoxes of quantum physics. Is light made up of particles or waves? Quantum mechanics says it's both. How can it be both? It can't. It can't. But it is. It's paradoxical, and yet, it works. The second person you need to know is Niels Bohr, who discovered the structure of the atom. The atomic model you've often seen, where the atom is depicted like a planet with a nucleus in the center and electrons orbiting around it, is Bohr's contribution. This model is known as the Bohr Atomic Model. Bohr's contribution was crucial in the development of atomic theory and quantum theory, as quantum theory would not exist without Bohr's atomic structure. The third person you need to know is Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg discovered one of the most important principles in quantum theory, the uncertainty principle. This principle states that at the quantum level, a particle's position and velocity cannot be simultaneously determined with precision. This contradicted classical physics and sparked debates between Einstein and Niels Bohr. Bohr concluded that in the quantum world, the reality of objects becomes uncertain. He even dared to say that reality is subjective, a conclusion Einstein disliked. This disagreement gave rise to Einstein's famous quote, God does not play dice, to which Bohr responded, Einstein, stop telling God what to do. The key takeaway is that these three individuals were the founders of quantum physics. Now let's discuss how these three individuals paved the way for the creation of the atomic bomb and ultimately became Oppenheimer's mentors in developing the bomb. The first, you need to understand Einstein's situation in Germany. Einstein was German and Jewish. In the 1930s, Germany faced an economic crisis following its defeat in World War I. Hitler blamed the Jews as the troublemakers and sought to cleanse Germany of Jewish people. Einstein became a target, and even quantum physics was labeled by Hitler as a Jewish creation. Einstein was under threat of assassination. One magazine even labeled him as not yet hanged. To save himself, Einstein fled to America and chose to live there. In America, Einstein met Oppenheimer. While they weren't yet discussing the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer was known to have helped Jews escape from Germany. They think that socialism is a bigger threat than fascism. Not for long. Look at what the Nazis are doing to the Jews. I send funds to colleagues in Germany to emigrate. I have to do something. The atomic bomb issue began in 1938 a year before World War II and seven years after Einstein moved to America. At that time, the physics world was abuzz because German physicists had discovered nuclear fission, the splitting of atomic nuclei. On me! What? What is it? They've done it. They've done it. Hans Schumpf in Germany. They split the uranium nucleus. It's a nuclear fission. They did it. They split the atom. It's not possible. News of this discovery reached Einstein in America and Einstein immediately wrote a letter to President Roosevelt, 
the U.S. president at the time. He warned that this discovery could lead Germany to create an atomic bomb. In his letter, Einstein warned that if an atomic bomb were placed on a ship and detonated in a port, it would destroy the entire port and the surrounding area. But we've all heard about Einstein and Zillard's letter to Roosevelt warning him the Germans can make a bomb, and I know what it means for the Nazis to have a bomb. This letter prompted the U.S. to initiate the Manhattan Project, the project to develop an atomic bomb as a countermeasure to Germany's bomb. Oppenheimer was chosen to lead this project. Now I'm looking for a project director. And my name came up. Even though you brought quantum physics to America, which made me curious. Oppenheimer immediately gathered the best physicists to join the project. It's about unleashing the strong force before the Nazis do. Oh, yeah. The question is, did Germany actually create an atomic bomb? Before discussing Germany's atomic bomb project, let's talk about Heisenberg in Germany. Werner Heisenberg was German, such as Einstein. The difference was that Heisenberg was not Jewish, so he was relatively safe in Germany. Like Einstein, Heisenberg was a genius physicist. At the age of 25, he became the youngest professor in Germany and was clearly one of the pioneers of quantum theory. One of Heisenberg's students was Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer studied quantum physics under Heisenberg while he was in Germany. Oppenheimer? Yes. I liked your paper on molecules. Probably because you inspired it. Returning to the question, did Germany create an atomic bomb? Einstein's suspicions were correct. Germany had indeed started a project to develop an atomic bomb. And who was recruited to lead it? None other than Heisenberg. Who do you think they put in charge? Werner Heisenberg. He's the most intuitive understanding of atomic structure I've ever seen. So, while Oppenheimer was the key figure in the US, Heisenberg was the key figure in Germany. The two sides raced to see who could create the atomic bomb first. But Oppenheimer was confident that Germany would lose. Why? As previously mentioned, Adolf Hitler disliked quantum physics. Even though quantum physics and Einstein's equation E equals mc squared were the foundation of atomic bomb development. Because of this, Oppenheimer was sure Germany would not fully commit to the project. This was proven when Werner Heisenberg's requests for funding to develop the atomic bomb were repeatedly denied because the costs were deemed too high. Building an atomic bomb was no simple task. Hitler is so, so blinded by hate that he's denied Heisenberg proper resources because it'll take vast resources. Heisenberg became stressed because the atomic bomb project was not approved, while progress in the U.S. under Oppenheimer was significant. This led Heisenberg to travel to Denmark to meet Niels Bohr, his preceptor. Their meeting was controversial. Some say Heisenberg tried to persuade Niels Bohr to help him build an atomic bomb for Germany. Others claim that Heisenberg actually disclosed information on how to build an atomic bomb. Uh, Heisenberg sought me out in Copenhagen. It was chilling, my old student working for the Nazis. He told me some things to draw me out. On the other side, Oppenheimer also tried to recruit Niels Bohr. Bohr became a point of contention between the two opposing sides. Why? Because Niels Bohr was a physicist on par with Einstein. Is there any chance of getting Bohr out of Denmark? Is he that important? How many people do you know who proved Einstein wrong? Niels Bohr was Denmark. Although he wasn't Jewish, his mother was, which made him a target for Hitler, such as Einstein. At the time, Denmark was under German occupation. Bohr fled Denmark to save himself, traveling to Sweden in a small boat and then boarding a British fighter plane. It is said that he fainted during the flight because he forgot to wear an oxygen mask. The British pilot put me in the bomb and they filled me the, the, the oxygen, uh, you know, but I messed it up. Um, when they opened me up in Scotland, I was unconscious. But I pretended I'd been napping. <laughs> when Niels Bohr arrived in America, Oppenheimer was delighted, thinking Bohr would join him. However, Bohr did not join the project. Instead, he wanted to warn about the dangers of the atomic bomb. Bohr realized that the atomic bomb was too powerful for any single country to control and feared it would lead to a nuclear arms race that could destroy the entire world. We have to make the politicians understand this isn't a new weapon. It's a new world. 
This concern made Oppenheimer hesitant, leading him to consult Einstein. There was even a calculation that suggested the atomic bomb could destroy the world. If we detonate an atomic device, we might start a chain reaction that destroys the world. And if the truth is catastrophic, then you stop and you share your findings with the Nazis. Both Einstein and Bohr were Oppenheimer's teachers, refused to be directly involved in the development of the atomic bomb because they understood its consequences. I am not here to help, Robert. I knew you could do this without me. This is yours, not mine. However, Oppenheimer could not back out as he had already recruited many scientists and had strong U.S. government support. Oppenheimer was even allowed to establish a temporary city in Los Alamos, which became the world's largest laboratory dedicated to building the atomic bomb. By July 1945, the atomic bomb was completed and successfully tested. Unfortunately, by that time, Germany had already surrendered, leaving Japan as the remaining enemy. The bomb, initially intended as a gift for Hitler, was instead decided to be used on Japan. Some physicists tried to prevent the bomb from being dropped on Japan. Leo Szilard, who had co-written the letter with Einstein to President Roosevelt urging the creation of the bomb, later asked Oppenheimer to persuade the U.S. government not to use it. Germany is defeated. Japan's not going to hold out alone. You and Einstein with your letter to Roosevelt saying we could build a bomb. <laughs> Against Germany. That's not how weapons manufacture works, silly. However, it was out of Oppenheimer's hands. The bomb had already been handed over to the U.S., and its use was their decision. The Japanese people will not surrender under any circumstances. The use of the atomic bomb on Japanese cities will save lives. Ultimately, Oppenheimer's atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki bringing World War II to an end. On one hand, Oppenheimer was hailed as a hero, but on the other, he felt haunted by the victims of the bomb he had created. Hi, Mr. President. Um, I feel that I have blood on my hands. And it turned out that Bohr's fears were correct. The atomic bomb did not mark the end. Instead, it was the beginning of a global nuclear arms race. Once the world witnessed its power, countries began competing to develop their own nuclear weapons, ultimately leading to the very consequences Niels Bohr and Einstein had feared. He says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. <laughs> 